Welcome to Through Lens Lens, and I am Lynn Mallory, as you know, and um, I encourage you, if you haven't already, I wanted to uh, encourage you to subscribe, like, share this video on YouTube, um, and also if you are listening by way of podcast, make sure that you subscribe to the podcast so that you can get notifications when the new podcast are available, the new episodes. All right, so have you ever had a situation where, you know, you were on a path to do something, you know, you had a clear cut goal, and then you uh, receive like a, a message, a prompting, you hear the voice of God uh, by any means, you know, whether it's a voice, a prompting, like I said, and you're like, oh man, that is not what I plan to do today. So have you ever been there? I am sure you have. So I wanted to share an experience with you about when that happened to me. So this is now about, uh, let's see, we're in 2021. So this is about eight to nine years ago, okay? So around that time I was in college, I attended college as a non-traditional student. And, um, you know, while I was there, I attended college for the main purpose to get my bachelor's degree. But I also had in the back of my mind, okay, well, while I'm here, I want to use this campus as like my mission field, right? And um, use it as an opportunity to share Christ with others, to show Christ to others with my own life. And so that was something that I, you know, had set out to do. I didn't join any of the campus ministry groups just because, you know, with me being a, a non-traditional student and uh, I had other obligations, I did not have the time to dedicate to, you know, the meetings and like the different uh, projects. But, you know, I decided, you know, I'm going to do this personally. So like I said, my main purpose was to get the education so that I could get the degree. And then, you know, along the way if you know the opportunity presented itself then of course i would you know pursue it and I, but i remember this one particular situation where um i was in class with someone and uh my major was sociology so uh, the class was you know a sociology topic and i remember there was one a colleague of mine in the class that she was very strong-willed in terms of her responses whenever she shared she was very uh, passionate about uh, her viewpoint about things and I was like man she is just so like headstrong is what we would call it you know and so I remember getting the prompting you know within my spirit from the Holy Spirit share share me with her talk to her about me and I was like she's a little bit more you know than I think I could you know handle in terms of I just didn't think to be honest I just didn't think she would be receptive of what I had to say just based on you know the things that she had shared in the class and so this is what I said though you know I said well hmm I don't know. You sure, Lord? You know, that's how I was on the inside. And I said, well, and I'm, I'm reasoning all this within myself. So I didn't say these things verbally, but this is just in my mind, you know, in, in my spirit. And I'm saying, okay, if you want me to do this, I need you to help me and you open up the door and, you know, I'll pursue it. So I was very good in um, social statistics, which is funny because I'm not a, a, a strong math person, you know, I did well in it, but if I had to choose what my strength was, I would say English language arts or like reading, you know, those type subjects. But um, in college, this particular course, social statistics, not regular, because regular statistics, I got a C in it, but like social statistics, I got an A in it. And what I realized is that because the, the, um, the, questions and the, the problems they were more in like word problem format like I could put myself in the position and I knew exactly how to answer the questions 
so the class you know my classmates in this particular class that was a different class they knew like i was like the expert you know student in this and um so she approached me this particular colleague of mine you know the other classes where i realized you know how you know uh, strong she was about that particular topic but in this uh social statistics class we didn't interact at all but you know like i said people recognized that i was really good in it and so she approached me and asked if i would tutor her and i was like boom there it is i was like you know lord thank you that you opened that door and like you know i asked him to do it and so i was like yes this is the opportunity so i told her yes you know i will tutor you and um the best way that we could get our schedules to uh you know get in sync is to tutor her on a saturday so we had a test coming up that uh next week and so we met up on saturday and we were on campus for three hours and um I don't even know how, you know, we segue into talking about God, but you know, that's one of the wonderful things that I just love that he can do. Um, we're talking about statistics and God entered in. And so we had a conversation and um, basically somehow we talked about, you know, what happens after we die. And she said, well, no one knows what happens when they die. And I was like, why do you think that? And she said, because how can you know? How do you know whether you're going to go, um, you know, to be with God or not? And she did share with me that she was of Catholic faith. And so I asked her, I said, well, you know, the, you know, based on, you know, my belief system is if you believe in Jesus Christ, you've accepted his gift to pay your sin debt. You know, when he died up on the cross, he paid our sin debt in full, meaning that we do not have to endure the payment, which is death, eternal death. And if we believe in that, and if we believe that he saved us from that, then you can have eternal life. And she started thinking, and I could tell she was thinking, she said, hmm, she said, I never heard it that way. She said, you've given me a lot to think about. And so I think of this whole three hour time period that we were there, I think we only really studied maybe about an hour and a half to two. But then the last part, you know, we were able to have this conversation. And she had her daughter there. Her daughter was a young girl, um, I think school age, but like elementary age. So I was like, man, this is great because she's able to be here and hear this conversation. And so that day, um, this young lady, she did not make a decision to, you know, become a believer in Jesus Christ. But I believe that a seed was planted or either a seed was watered. Um, and I know in the word, there is a scripture. Let me see if I can find it very quickly bear with me but there's a scripture where paul talks about how he and apollos um they were the waterers and the uh, the planters and the waters of the seed but god is the one who will bring forth the increase and um let me see if i can get that really quickly let's see yep so first corinthians three and six let's go there First Corinthians three and six. Okay. So actually, I'm going to go to five. It says, after all, who is, so this is first Corinthians chapter three, verse five and six. After all, who is Apollos? Who is Paul? We are only God's servants through whom you believe the good news. Each of us did the work the Lord gave us. I, which Paul, I planted the seed in your hearts and Apollos watered it, but it was God who made it grow. So, and then it goes on in verse seven to say, it's not important who does the planting or who does the watering. What's important is that God makes the seed grow. And so I 
and they're talking about you know the the good news you either planted the seed meaning that's that person who you're uh sharing the gospel the good news with you're either they're either hearing it for the first time or you are watering a seed that's already been planted by someone else so you're just adding to what has already been deposited within that person concerning the good news but it's god who's going to allow it to grow to allow it to to them to resonate within them to want to come to him and then there's another scripture um that i want to share too second corinthians chapter five and i believe it's like 19. let's see and i can confirm that okay so yep 19. so second corinthians chapter 5 verse 19 um, it says, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. Verse 20. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And so on that day, I believe that the seed of the gospel was planted or either it was watered. And I, and I just believe by faith, I don't know where my colleague is, this young lady, I don't know where she is today, but I just believe by faith that maybe someone else watered maybe someone else water, maybe someone else water, you know, and that God is going to get the increase if he hasn't already, that he is going to allow it to fruition into her um, to be a believer because she has, she has heard the truth. Um, and, you know, like this scripture says, we're Christ's ambassadors. So that was one of the roles that I took on, you know, even though I was a student, I also had in my mind, also, I am going to be a representative of Christ. And so I just want to share with that that with you today. Don't get so caught up in what you're doing in this temporary world. You know, you may be having your job, you know, we work and we can get so consumed in it, but don't miss seeing what is the true purpose there at where you are, whether it's a job, whether it's you in a ministry, whether it's you in your home. Do not miss seeing that the true purpose is for you to be the light of Christ in that situation that you're currently in. See it from a different perspective. Look beyond what is the obvious. Like for me, example, college. The obvious is that I was a student going to get a degree, but I had to look beyond that and be able to help, you know, um, my colleagues as I went along the path, along the way, in hopes that even when we're done with that temporary season that we were in as college students, that they were able to be impacted, um, you know, in terms of eternity, eternal, their eternal uh, destinations is settled in Christ. And so I hope that this has been encouraging to you. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below in the comment section. Um, I have enjoyed our time together today. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Through Lens Lens. And please don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. Until next time, have a blessed day.